Okay, Chav, are you ready for this piece? Yeah. This is a piece. I'm telling you, you hear this piece tonight, I don't think Purim will ever be the same again. I'm hoping. should be Zeichah. There we go. If anyone wants, there's a Chumash here if you want to look up, because of the Mar of I don't have my sheets, I have to do it Baal Peh, so... Uh, no, 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 you have this one here, if, any, if you guys need. Yeah, pass it around. Yeah. You'll be looking at page 236. That's one of the main marmakomot that we're going to be really stelling on tonight. Okay, ready? Who are you crying? Let me just dive in for a minute. Who are you crying? Aviata Eli Vitsu Yeshuati. Who are you crying? Aviata Eli Vitsu Yeshuati. Who are you crying? Aviata. Eli Vitsu Yeshuati. Pulchana Dalakut Shabricho. Okay, gentlemen, good evening. Kedarkenu Bakodesh, I'd like to start with a biracha. I'm hoping that this biracha is going to open up to us all the birachot of the greatest day of blessings that's coming right at us, the great day of Purim. Haba Aleinu Letova Bezat Hashem. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Shakol Nihia Bidvaro I think one thing is for certain. I think it became very clear to everyone in the world, and especially to Klal Yisrael, that in this world, what you see is never what you get. And in this world, seeing is never believing. Because boy, did we think and we watch of what took place in the last 12 months and how Hashem turned the entire world upside down. And what seemed to be great turned out to be nothing. And everything that we thought was wow turned out to be not much. The whole world became this upside down v'nahafochu. Only a week ago, I brought my son into the city because we wanted to uh, grab something to eat. We stopped in one of the places and we couldn't believe the entire city was boarded up. We looked at the Ge'e of America. We looked at New York City, Midtown, Broadway. These amazing uh, trophy buildings. This is the, uh, the pride of all the real estate, what you would call the pride of America. The greatest location. People come from all over the world. And now it's a ghost town. Boarded up. To see it is unbelievable. How Hashem was mashpil ge'im ade aretz. In a matter of a few months. In this world what you see is never what you get. And Hashem shows us. That everything is a masquerade. And everything is behind the mask. The mask of galut. And what you see on the outside is not necessarily 
what there is on the inside. If there was ever a message that the month of Adar and the story of Purim tells us, it's this message of the mask. Take a look, here's Haman. He tells Ashverosh, kill Vashti, says the Medrash. Haman had a daughter. He thought that she would be the prince, that she would be the queen. So he thought that he'd be get he'd be able to get Gidula through the queen. Now that'll be his daughter. What happened? Vashti is killed. Venahafochu, instead of the up and pending coming queen to rise into power, she was the one who ended up killing him. Unbelievable. Bitam Vateresh. They're trying to kill the king. They end up getting killed. Mordechai saves them. Here is Haman. After he builds this incredible gallow. And he's coming out to the castle to tell the king to hang Mordechai. And just as he walks in, the king tells him, the moment you would think is the downfall of Mordechai. The king tells him instead, put him on a horse, walk him through the city. Scream out that this is the greatness that we're going to give to. The moment you thought we'd be falling is the moment we rose. I mean, it's everything in the Megillah that was going in one direction ended up going in a completely opposite direction. The whole theme of the Megillah was Ben Ha'afochu. It's the theme of the mask. It's one big masquerade. It's one big smoke and mirrors of a world. Till finally Hashem says, when are you going to learn the lesson, Klal Yisrael? Don't be boteach in anybody else. Don't put your emunah bitachon in anything else. The only one behind the scenes is me. And this goes literally through the whole Megillah, this thing. Comes the month of Adar, comes Purim. And here is the great masquerade. And we literally push Klal Yisrael. Look beyond the costume. Look beyond the mask. And see the truth inside. And if we didn't get this message in the month of Purim and Adar, here now we're 12 months behind the mask. And Hashem says, when are you going to get the message? Everything is just an hour, outwardly mask. Look beyond the mask. Rabotai, this is the message that we've spoken about for the last few weeks. But I do want to tell you, tonight, what we're going to do is rewrite the story of Purim like we never heard it before. And I, I am convinced that if you stick with me on this amazing schmooze that we're going to hit on tonight, Purim is never going to be the same to you again. It's going to be such an opportunity that you're going to soak up every single minute of it because you're going to realize that when they said that Yom Kippur is Ke Purim, they weren't joking. You're going to find out now the story behind the mask. So if we had to start the class, this is where we begin. Gentlemen, tonight's title, the story behind the story of Purim, or in better terms, the story behind the mask. So here we go. All the halachot of Purim and everything we do is very clearly written in the Megillah. The parties, the su'udah that we make on Purim, clearly written in the Megillah. When it comes to Meshloach Manot, written in the Megillah. When it comes to Matanot Le'ebyonim, written in the Megillah. Everything we do on Purim, clearly written in the Megillah, except for one thing. There's nowhere in the Megillah that it talks about dressing up in costumes. There's nowhere Megillah talks about wearing masks. That's something that became a minhag of Israel that we held to and we uphold Adayam. 
And don't take that lightly. Great rabbis, great people, dressed up in costumes and masks. Namely, just as an example, the Rama. The Raman Shulchan Aruch, Rav Moshe Iserlish. He was known that he would dress up in a costume, put on a mask, at the end of the day of Purim, after the Seuda, and he would knock on the doors of the houses of the people in his town, and he would come in dancing and singing in a costume, in a mask. And then he would remind everyone in the house not to forget to say Kriyat Shema of Laila. Because so many people miss out on the Kriyat Shema of Laila, which is a Diorite. He came dancing with a costume and a mask, the Rama, and many great rabbis. The costume of the, the concept of the costume and the mask on Purim is Minhag Yisrael Kadosh. But where did it come from? What is it about? It's not in the Megillah. Everything else we do is clearly written. Al Yedei Mordechai Ve'ester. Where did this come from? And what does it represent? It's very interesting. The Megillah puts great emphasis on clothing. Maybe not costumes. The Vilna Gaon wants to know. The Pasuk at the end of the Megillah says, U Mordechai Yatsam Lifne HaMelech Bilvush Malchut Tchelet Vachur Vateret Zahav Gdola Vitachrich Butz Vargaman Vair Shushan when they saw Mordechai come out with royal clothing, wearing all these magnificent clothing, the, the entire Klal Yisrael began to celebrate. Why? Because they saw Mordechai come out with royal clothing. So... It's amazing. When Haman was hung, or actually hanged, when his ten sons were hanged, it doesn't say, Laihudim, Haita, Orav, Simcha, Vizazom, Vika. What are you not? What are you not? He was Tsorer HaYehudim. Your enemy is dead. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Now's the time to celebrate. No, that's not what they celebrated. You know when they celebrated? When Mordechai comes out, Bilvush Malchut, and he's wearing these ten magnificent clothing? Wow! Vayir Shushan, Tzahola V'samecha, Layhudim, Haitar V'samcha V'sason V'ikar. Esther V'olna Gaon, what was it about Mordechai and these ten royal clothing that made such a big deal that that was the moment of celebration? Interesting. We see that the clothing plays a role in this holiday. The costumes, the masks, Mordechai in royal clothing. What are we missing here? Where does this come from and what is going on? Gentlemen, listen to me well. I don't make promises often. I am telling you, what you're about to hear now is off the charts. This is based on a schmooze that I heard years ago from Rabbi Daniel Gladstein, Yedidi Ahuvi. A lot of Mar Mekomot come from him. A lot of Mar Mekomot come from the Sefer Yemei Purim. Some of the Mar Mekomot come from Rabbi Yonatan Eitritz, Yarod Vash, that I want to share with you tonight. The combination is a magnificent schmooze of the story behind the mask of Purim like you never heard it before. And if you hear this and you put your heart into this, the day of Purim, the holiday will never be the same to you again. So let's take off on this. Here we go. What was it that Haman was so angry? Such a hater that he not only hated Mordechai, but the Pasuk says, Vayivaz, Haman, he was so not just to kill Mordechai, he wanted to kill every Jew. Am Mordechai, the nation of Mordechai. 
Did you hear that word vaives? We heard that word before. Where did we hear of that word vaives? Vaives et ha It says by Esav that he belittled the blessings of the Bechora. What is the word vaives doing in the Megillah? Says the Targum, Targum Yonatan ben Uziel, on this Pasuk. You know why Haman wanted to not just kill Mordechai, but he wanted to kill every single Jew. Am Mordechai? Says the Targum in Aramaic, and I'll explain it to you in English. Haman said to himself, the great great grandfather of this guy Mordechai stole the blessings from my great great grandfather Esav and now I want revenge. This was based on an old family feud. This was the old Hatfields and the McCormicks. This went way way back and Haman was so enraged that he says, I'm going to get him. His great-grandfather ripped off my great-grandfather. I'm going to take revenge. The great blessings that my great-grandfather was supposed to get and his grandfather stole, I'm going to get him back. I'm going to right the wrong. I'm going to take back what rightfully belongs to us. This is incredible. This was really built on an age-old fight. The Targum says it black and white. What was Haman's plan? Gentlemen, Haman was Yodea Itim. Haman was a sorcerer. Haman, he knew the astrology of the stars. He knew the Mazalot. He was black magic. He was everything that you don't want to be. Haman had a plan. And I'm about to tell you in depth the plan as the way it unfolds in the words of Rabbi Yonatan Eipschitz and the Vilna Gaon. Listen to this Mahalach, a story that you never heard before. In the beginning of time, Adam HaRishon was told by Hashem that from all the trees, the Etz Hadat is forbidden to eat from. Haman goes Adam goes and sins and eats from the Etz Hadat. He eats from the forbidden. At that point, Hashem curses him. What are the curses? So the Pasuk tells us. From the beginning. All the famous curses. All the curses that Hashem curses Adam because he sinned. Says Rashi, how many curses? Says Rashi, if you count, you'll see that Hashem cursed Adam ten kilalot after he sinned with the etzadat. Ten kilalot. Amazing. You know, when the Gemara wants to know, where do you find the remez of Haman in the Torah? Haman min ha-Torah minayin. Says the Gemara, Hamin ha-etz. Hamin, the same letters as Haman. You want to know where we find Haman in the Torah? Hamin ha-etz. From the story of the Etz Hadat. Wait one second. From all places to be Meramez and place Haman in the Torah. We put him in the story of the Etz Hadat. It must be that Haman has something to do with the story of Adam Arishon sinning by the Etz Hadat. What is the connection? Open your hearts. Listen to this. Says the Gaon. If you take a look, you'll see that Hashem cursed Adam Arishon ten kilalot after he sinned with the Etz Hadat. What's interesting is, later on, when Yitzchak Avinu wants to give the blessings, the famous great blessings of Birkat Yitzchak Avinu, what we call the Bechora, that Yaakov and Esav were battling for. Yitzchak Avinu comes to Esav and tells him, go out and get me shnei gidae izim. Why? 
Guys, you know what night that was? Do you know what the night was that Yitzchak was coming to bless Esav? That night was the night of Pesach. Rashi tells us, he told him, go out and get me. Shnei gida'e izim. Echad lepesach ve'echad lechagiga. And if you bring me these korbanot, says Yitzchak to Esav, I will give you the greatest blessings of history, which later on we know what those blessings were. Birkat Yitzchak Avinu. What happens at that moment? Rivka Imenu comes to Yaakov and she says to Yaakov, quickly, go in. I'm going to prepare for you these two Gida'e Izim. I'm going to make one Korban Pesach, one Korban Chagiga. Bring it into your father so that you'll get the rightful blessings that you're supposed to get. Yaakov Avinu tells his mother, but if I go inside, he's going to see I'm Chalak. He's going to see I'm not Esav. Instead of, God forbid, getting the blessings, I'm going to get Kilalot. So Rivka Imenu tells him, no, Alai kilalecha b'ni, chas v'shalom. And instead, what does she do? She takes the bigdeh esav, and she puts it on Yaakov Avinu. Yaakov Avinu dresses up like esav in the first Purim costume. This was the first Purim costume of history. Yaakov dressed up as somebody else, as Esav. That's the Makor, by the way. You see all these guys? A few days on Purim, you're going to see that all the Obamas, right? You're going to see all the costumes, all the Ayatollah Khomeini. Where did that come from? Because the first costume in history, a tzaddik, was dressing up like a Russia. So all these guys took the Makor. That the tzaddikim dress up like, guess what? Yaakov Avinu dresses up like an Esav in a costume. And he comes into his father. And his father, Be'emet, he sees someone dressed up like someone else. Hakol kol Yaakov v'hayedahim ide Esav. That night, Yaakov Avinu gives his father one Pesach, one Chagiga. Gentlemen, I don't have my sheets with me, but I could show you in the Psukim that Yaakov and Yitzchak Avinu had a Pesach said there that night. I could show you in the Psukim the Arba Kosot. I can show you in the Psukim the Charoset, the Karpas, and the Matzot. I can even show you in the Psukim and after they finished the entire said there, here Yitzchak Avinu blesses Yaakov Avinu with the greatest blessings of history. Viten lecha ha Elohim mital hashamayim mishmane haaretz rov dagan v'tirosh yavdu chamim yishtachvu lecha bnei elmin hegevi laachecha nevi mecha orech harur baruch baruch all the blessings of Viten lecha Elohim, the greatest blessings of history. How many blessings? Says the Vilna Gaon. Count. You'll see. V'yiten lecha, what ten, the greatest celestial blessings in history. Given from Yitzchak to Yaakov, the night of Pesach, when Yaakov was dressed up in a costume. And at that moment, he got the ten greatest blessings of history. Because these ten birachot were meant to counteract the ten kilalot that Hashem gave to Adam Arishon after the sin of Adam. At that moment, Klal Yisrael went from like the rest of the world, Bnei Adam, who was under the ten curses of God, that night they became, instead of Arur, but when we got the blessings, we became Baruch. On this night, we were raised up from all the nations of the world 
The Jewish people were raised up from all the nations of the world who are still wallowing in the klalot of mankind. We were raised above them and we were now, that night we became the blessed people of history. We actually became the chosen people, the blessed people. That night we got the 10 greatest blessings of history and we became a blessed people that night from the 10 berachot of Yiten Lecha that Yitzchak gave Yaakov Avinu. These 10 counteracting those 10 kilalot. Amazing. And then Yaakov walks out. Now gentlemen, before I go on, I just want to mention many of the tzaddikim, mikubalim, admirim, I've heard many times that they said they can't understand how a Jew could get the real shefa and blessings and wealth that's coming to him that week if he doesn't say, V'yiten l'chai lokim motza'e Shabbat. He says well, they can't even understand how it's possible, how you're even a clay kibble to accept the shefa that's supposed to be coming to you that week if you didn't say, motza'e Shabbat, V'yiten l'chai lokim ital ha'shmai mishmane ha'aretz. And therefore, if you're not saying, you're holding yourself out from the 10 greatest celestial blessings that the Jewish people got in history, and your true tsinor of Shefa for the coming week. Many have the minhag, like it's brought in the Sidur, to say at least two people at a time, or say it in a group at a time, so that each one could wish it on the other one. Generally, anything in Yiddishkeit, in Avodat HaKodesh, that's done berabim, there's always the concept of berov am. Berov am hadrat melech. It's always better to do it with many. But nonetheless, I felt that that was worthy of a break of station identification to put in there the V'yiten L'chai Elohim to understand that if you really want to up your game, especially in the Berachot, Shefa, and Wealth, You'll do yourself the greatest favor and put yourself in the best position to get really what should be coming to you if Motzei Shabbat, you start saying every Motzei Shabbat in the time of Havdalah, or maybe some people say it right after Aleinu, V'yiten lecha lokim ital ha'shamayim ishmane ha'aretz. The ten greatest blessings of history. Yaakov Avinu gets it after the entire Seder Pesach night and leaves. And just then, who walks in? Esav. And Esav says, Abba, here is the Shnei Daisy. Get up, eat, bless me. Ah, Esav. Get up, eat, bless me. Says Yisak Avinu, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? I just gave all the berachot. Ooh, what happened? He tricked me a second time. He took my birachot. Abba, you have to have something left for me. Says Yitzchak Avino, I don't. Your brother took everything. What was the wording that Yitzchak Avino said? Ba achicha b'mirma. Your brother came with trickery. And he took the blessings, and I have nothing left for you. Rabotai, you want to hear something magnificent? Says the Megale Amukot, Ba Achicha B'mirma. Mirma is Gematria Afikoman. Your brother is so smart and so shrewd. I had the Pesach said there with him, and he already fed me the Afikoman. Once you eat the Afikoman, you're not allowed to eat after anything else. And therefore, in maftirin achara pesach afikoman. You're not allowed to eat after that afikoman. Ba'achicha b'mirma. Your brother, he already fed me the afikoman. Mirma is the gematria of afikoman. He already fed me the afikoman. I can't even eat from your food if I wanted to. And if I can't eat from your food, how am I to bless you? Wow, brilliant, genius. And it was at that moment that Esav 
started to cry. Vayitzak se'aka gedola umara ad me'od. Says Reb Shamshin me'astropoli. The famous medrash. The first hair drop dropped from Esav's eye. And that was the destruction of the first Bet HaMikdash. The second tear drop dropped from Esav's eye. Destruction of the second Bet HaMikdash. The third tear drop was dangling. And Yitzchak said, stop. Stop. That's it. Hold that tear. Don't let that tear drop. I'll give you a blessing. I have a blessing for you. Rabotai, listen to the blessing and you'll see something that you'd never believe to be true. Take a look, gentlemen. We're looking at page 236. Perek Havzayin, Pasuk Mem. Here is the blessing Ya Yitzchak gives to Esav. Al Kharbecha Tehyeh. You're going to live by the sword. Ve'et achicha ta'avod. And you're going to worship your brother. He just gave him the blessing of Christianity. Ve'et achicha ta'avod. You're going to worship a Jew. He just gave him the blessing of Christianity. To Esav, Christianity was a blessing. Because he could have remained a nation of people that was absolutely despondent and disconnected from God completely. Instead, he gave him at least a nation that had a religion that was, although completely off and wrong, but based on a true story. And we spoke about this in a share not too long ago, that later on, when Mashiach comes, Christianity is going to spread so much to the world that at least they'll have some basics of truth. That there was an Old Testament, there's a Moshe, there's a Hashem, there's a Torah. They know these things. They even have a tremendous respect and a support for Israel to the Jewish people because of that. They're completely off and completely uh, crooked. But now instead of Mashiach send, starting from scratch, he has to just tweak what it is that they have wrong in order to easy early bring the Vahaya Hashem Lemelech Al Kol Haaretz by Yom Ahuye Hashem Echadush Moechat. Listen to the blessings. Al Char Bechatichye Esav, you're going to live by the sword. Vet Achicha Ta'avod, you will worship your brother. You will end up one day worshiping a Jew. Christianity. Now open your hearts, Rabotai, read with me. Says Yitzchak Avinu to Esav, Vehaya Ka'asher Tarid. And when your brother goes down, Ufarakta Ulo Savarecha, then you will come out from underneath his obedience and you will rise up this is the moment that Yitzchak Avinu took the ten greatest blessings of history which originally was given to Yaakov Avinu without any strings attached without any conditions but now a condition was placed and now Klal Yisrael got the greatest blessings on condition that we remain true to Hashem Torah and Mitzvot. When the Jewish people are doing good, they keep the ten greatest blessings of history and Esav is under our dominion. But for Tarid, but if Chas Shalom we mess up and we drop the ball and we're not following Hashem, we're not learning Torah, we're not keeping mitzvot, when we go down, then he goes up. So instead of giving Esav a new blessing, 
he piggybacked him on our blessing. And suddenly, Yaakov and Esav became two brothers on a seesaw. When one goes up, the other one goes down. And when one goes down, the other one goes up. When one goes down, the other one goes up. So we were given the ten greatest blessings in history. It made us superhuman beings. It made us the greatest people on earth. It made us above and beyond anyone else. As long as we're doing what we're supposed to be doing, as long as Klal Yisrael is Shomer Torah Mitzvot, we're the greatest people on planet earth. But the minute we drop Torah and Mitzvot, the minute we fall, Esav goes up. The minute we go down, he goes up. The Lashon of Rashi, back in the beginning of Toldot, on the Pasuk, Ul-Om Mil-Om Ye'ematz, says Rashi, Zekam Vizenofel. When one goes up, these two boys in your stomach, this was the prophecy. This is what Shem Ve'ever gave a nevuah to the two babies in the stomach of Rivka Imenu. You see these two babies? Ul'om mil'om ye'ematz. Says Rashi, you know what it meant? Zekam v'zenofel. When one will go up, the other one automatically will go down. Or better the other way. When one goes down, the other one automatically rises up. When is the moment that Hashem decides who is going up and who is going down? Who is getting the ten greatest blessings of history and who's losing them? The night it was given was the night that every year it's given again every single year. And on the night of Pesach, which is the night that the ten greatest blessings was given, Birkat Yitzchak Avinu to Yaakov. Every year on the night of Pesach, Hashem looks to see, is Klal Yisrael doing what they're supposed to be doing or not? If we're doing good and we're doing what we're supposed to be doing and we rise up, we get the ten greatest blessings of history and Esa falls. But of Chas Shalom. Hashem on the night of Pesach sees that Kral Yisrael is going down. That's the night that Esav rises and he intercepts and grabs the ten greatest blessings away from us. And now we fall under his dominion. Wow. Do you know who knew this secret? Haman. Haman was Yodea Itim. He knew the secrets of the moment. He knew that this is something that he can capitalize on. Vayivez! I'm going to get the Bechora back. That Mordechai, those Jews, their great-great-grandfather stole the Berachot from my great-great-grandfather Esav. I want revenge. A family feud. I'm going to take the blessings back and I'm going to wipe them out. How are you going to do that, Haman? He knew the secret of the moment when the blessings are up for grabs. And what did he do? He planned properly. And I listened to the story of Purim, the real story behind the story that we always were told. It says the Megillah, Ahashverosh, the king of 127 countries was told to make this amazing party. Says the Megillah, how long did this party go for? 180 days. How long is 180 days? Six months. When did the party start? Says the Vilna Gaon. In those years, kingship of every impending king always started on the first day of Tishrei. Their uh, malchut began 
always on the first day of Tishrei. That means that the party which started at the beginning of this certain year of kingship at Ahasuerus, it started on Rosh Hashanah, Aleph Tishrei. For how long? 180 days, six months. How long does the party last? Until Aleph Nisan, six months later. But wait, three out of those six months is Chaser. So six months later is not Aleph Nisan, it's Gimel Nisan. But then it said, 180 days, Yamim Rabim. Says the Gaon, Yamim is always two. Rabim is always at least three. Two and three. So I'm holding by Gimel Nisan plus two and three is five. Gimel Nisan plus five brings me to Chet Nisan. And then the Megillah tells us that Ahasuerus made a special after party in the city of Shushan itself for seven days. Chet Nisan plus seven days brings you down to the 15th of Nisan, better known as the holiday of Pesach. The last party was the night of Pesach and that was the party that the Jews were invited to and the king insisted that they show up because Haman said so. Why did Haman want so much for the Jewish people to show up on the night of Pesach to the castle of the king on the last party? Because this is D-Day. Because this is the night that Hashem is going to decide who gets this year the ten greatest blessings. If He can get us to fall on this night, when we fall, He goes up. This was the plan. To blur us in to the big night and get us to fall. Because on that night, when Klai Yisrael falls, Esav rises, and this was the plan of Haman. And Mordechai was begging the people, don't go to the party. Why not, Rabbi? What's the problem? They have glut kosher food. They have shchitat bet Yosef. Why not? What's the problem? They have a thousand people in the shul, Rabbi. They have minyanim. They bring rabbis from Israel to give dafyomi. What's the problem? What can go wrong? What can go wrong? You want to know why not to go to that island? I mean, why not to go to the castle? You want to know why not to go to these places? I understand they have glad kosher food. I understand they have a thousand people in the minyan. I understand that they bring rabbis. But look what happened with the glad kosher food with the Minyanin. And Klal Yisrael fell to all Gimel, Averot, Chamorot that night. Haman made sure. Haman made sure to have glat kosher food. Haman made sure to have a Minyan for our beat of over a thousand people with the best Chazan that money can buy. Haman made sure to have everything you could want that will make it look kosher. Just to bring you in so that he can get us to fall. Mordechai was begging the people, don't go. You don't know what this night is. This is the night of Pesach. This is the night that everything is decided. And Clay says, well, why not? Glock kosher. Everything's great. And sure enough, they didn't listen. And they were nene from the Su'udav or Torah Shah. But you don't get what it means, guys. It wasn't Stam that they were nene from a Su'udah of a Russia. What it means is, is that they were brought into the Su'udah of the year. The night of Pesach. The night that it's decided who's going up and who's going down. Who gets the ten greatest blessings and who loses him. And that was the night that we were drawn into the plain of Haman. And he brought out all the Tavot and all the Averot. And that night we got to fall on all terrible Averot. And sure enough, his plan worked. 
Vahaya Ka'asher Tarid. That night we fell bad. And when we fell, he ran, he rose. Zekam, Vizeno fell. Zeno fell, Vizekam. And his plan worked. And that night Haman went from a barber to Bill Gates in one night. After that, Haman was so successful. He became the right hand man of the king. He became the richest man in the world. He became the most second the most powerful man in the world. Because he got us to fall. And he grabbed the blessings away from Klal Israel. We went back to being Arur. We fell back to the Kilalot of Adam Arishon. And instead he took the blessings of Yitzchak Avinu. Out of revenge, taking it now to Esav. Wow. Crazy. And Mama, she was coming to kill us. Chazal say... That Haman was close to pulling off the final solution. He was a Hitler, Yamach Shemo. But not only was he a Hitler in a physical sense, in a spiritual sense, he mamish put himself in a position, really, to pull it off. Because now he had the upper hand. He got us to fall. And not only was he against us, he got Shamayim to take the greatest Berachot away from Klal Yisrael. We are now Begeder Arur, not Baruch. We fell. We gave it up. Now he's Baruch and we're Arur when it was supposed to be the other way. And Mordechai, he rips his clothing realizing what happened. And Esther HaMalka says, now I see what he did to us. Now I understand. And if he brought us down and took the blessings away from us in a party, I'm going to bring him down and get the blessings back in a party. Now listen to what she did brilliantly. The story like you never heard it. A year later, Esther Hamalka invites Haman to a private party with him and Ahasuerus. Now, the Midrash tells us, and the Gemara talks about this, Esther had a certain gift. She had chen. Chen is not just beauty. There was a certain grace that she was given by Hashem. But this was a gift that anyone that looked at her saw a girl from his own country. An Italian would look at her, they saw an Italian girl. Any country that would look at her, they saw a girl from their country. So right away she was loved by everybody because she reminded them of the girl of the country they came from. When Haman looked at Esther, you know what he saw? He saw Hillary Clinton. I I'm sorry. He saw a Malekit girl. He saw Mamish a Malekit girl. And because of that, Haman never suspected Esther. Matter of fact, he felt that maybe he can have a closeness with her. Because she, to him in his eyes, she was where he's from, Agagi. And when he heard that she's calling him for a private party with the king, oh, the queen is warming up to me. This is all part of my plan. One day I might even get the throne of the king through the queen. He was already conspiring how to even outthrow Ahasuerus. He comes to the party, says the Megillah, she called Ahasuerus and Haman on Yud Gimel Nisan, on the 13th of Nisan. They come the next day to the party, she's sitting in front of Ahasuerus. Ahasuerus says to Esther, Ma bakata, ba, ma bakashatech. What, is your, what is your request, Esther? Why did you call this party? What does she say? Imala melech tov. Can you come back tomorrow for another party? What? What are you talking about? You know, you know who you're talking to here? You're talking to the king of 127 countries. You're talking to Haman, the second most powerful man in the world. 
and you call the party to tell them, can you come back tomorrow for another party? Well, you're playing with us. Why? Well, Rabotai, we read this Megillah how many years? 10, 20, 30, 50 years. Did you ever ask you, yourself a question? What is she doing? Who calls a party to tell you, to invite you to another party the next day? What, 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 what's going on? How did you understand this? How did you live with this story without going crazy on this question? The answer is that she knew, that he knew, that this month of Nisan has the greatest night of the entire year on the line. The night of Pesach is the night where everything is decided of who's going up and who's going down, who's rising and who's falling, who's going to get the 10 greatest blessings of history and who's going to lose them. And that's the way he stole it from us last year. So if I'm going to call him to a party on the night of Pesach, He's going to be very careful, very cautious, very on guard, because from all night she calls me tonight, wait one second, what is she up to? Wait one second, she might not be the girl that I thought she was made out to, wait one second. No one knows her whereabouts, who knows what she's up to. So brilliantly, what did she do? She called him two days earlier to throw him off on a par of a day, on a day that there's no worry of caution of what may go down and what might be. And she calls him in, oh, you'd gimel? You'd dial it? No problem. She's warming up to me. And sure enough, she gave the impression when he was by the party that she was met befriending Haman. And now he puts his guard down. She's calling me because she likes me. I'm a lucky girl. And now she realizes she drew him in. She realizes that his guard is down. Now, very innocently, thank you for coming today. Let's do this again tomorrow. Yeah, why not? Let's do this again tomorrow, says Haman. And the next day, Haman comes in. And that night, sitting by the party, the king turns to Esther and says, Ma bakashatech. And now Esther clears her throat. Kinim karnu ani ami. Me and my nation, the Jewish people, we were sold to be murdered, at first to be slaves, and now to be annihilated. What? Who, who, who did this? Haman Harasha Hazer, this guy, this Haman. Haman Novat. Haman said, wait one second. What's today? What's to tonight is Pesach? Oh no! She's doing to me what I did to them. Vinahafoch. Who? She's doing to me what I did to them. She's trying to get me to fall tonight. Because if I fall, they rise. The Haman of Ad, Hanan won sugar. How did she pull this off? How did she double sketch me? And that minute, you know what the king says? Ahashverosh chaps, the whole concept. He says, Mi, who, ze, ve, e, ze, who. Which is going to be the ze kam and which is going to be the ze mofel? Who am I going to side like? Do I go with Haman? And then my queen falls. Do I go with the queen? And then Haman falls. Tonight is the night that we decide. Zekam, Zenofel. Who am I going to go with? So Hashverosh doesn't know what to do. He's stuck between a rock and a hard place. Between his best friend and his wife. Some of us get into that position every now and then. And he runs outside to the garden to think it through. Mi huzeh, ve'ezeh hu. Who's going to be the Zekam? Who's going to be the Zenofel? Who should I side like? Tonight's the night. And just then, Hashem is Mazmin Malachim, that the Midrash tells us starts ripping up his garden. And he tells him, well, who told you to do this? Haman told us to do this. What? Yes, he's after your throne. What? He comes inside. 
Bechamato, he comes inside angry as can be. And what does he see? Behine Haman nofel alamita. Nofel? What happened to grammar? This story happened 2,000 years ago. It should have said Haman nafal. What's nofel? No. Zekam vizen nofel. Haman, he's the one now that's taken the plunge. And the moment Haman at that moment was nofel alamita, zekam vizen nofel. As he was nofel, klal Yisrael was come. And that was the moment Asherosh says, hang him! And on the first day of Pesach, Haman was hanged. And when Kalal Yisrael saw that not just Haman was hanged, but his ten sons were hanged. Now you understand the ten sons of Haman were representing the ten birachot that he lost. Zekam Zenofel. When he fell, he fell with all ten lost. He lost the ten greatest blessings, representing by the ten sons that were hung, and we got him back. When did we see with our eyes that we got back the ten blade blessings? Umar Dechai Yatsa. When Mordechai came out, Milifne HaMelech, how many royal garments, says the Vilna Gaon, was he wearing? Says the Gaon, take a look. He was wearing Bilvush, Malchut, Tchelet, Vachur, Vatere, Zahav, Gedola, Vitachrich. Boots is number nine, Argaman is number ten. He came walking out with the ten garments. When we saw that Mordechai is wearing ten royal garments, we realized we got the blessings back. Ve'ha'ir shushan tzaholam isamecha la'yehudim ha'ita ora v'simcha v'sasom v'ka. This is correct. This is this is this is out of this world. And now you understand. On the night of Pesach, it's decided. But on the night of, on the day of Purim, it's commemorated and remembered. And says Rabbi Yonatan Eipschitz, and says the Amigale Amukot, and many of the Mikubalim, that on Purim we put on the costume to remind us of our great great grandfather Yaakov Avinu who wore a costume in order to get the 10 greatest berachot of history. And therefore, on Purim, we put on the costume because this is the day that we celebrate the getting back of the 10 greatest blessings. Because on Purim, these 10 greatest blessings come into the world for Klal Yisrael to grab, for Klal Yisrael to take, for Klal Yisrael to rise up with. And that's why the day of Purim is such a day that even Yom Kippur is only Ke Purim. Because Kippur, it is what it is. You get slicha, michila, kapara. You get a cleansing, you get a tshuva, but that's it. Comes Purim and we're going to give you what you don't deserve. We're going to give you Birachot Ad Lashamayim. We're going to give you the 10 celestial greatest blessings of history. Because this is the day we got it back. It's the day that we went from Arur to Baruch. Says the Shulchan Aruch. Anyone that doesn't say on the day of Purim. Arur Haman. Baruch Mordechai is not Yotzer a holiday. What? We never heard of that on any other holiday. On Pesach, you don't have to say, Arur Paro, Baruch Moshe, you don't have to say that. On any other holiday of Hanukkah, you don't have to say, Arur Antioches, Baruch Matityahu. You know, all of a sudden, on Purim, you have to say it. The Lashon of Maran and Shulchan Aruch. Tzarich Lomar, you, you're obligated to say on Purim, 
Arur Haman Baruch Mordechai, like we sing in Shoshanat Yaakov, right? Arur Haman Baruch Mordechai. Why? Because that's the whole point of the day. We went from Arur to Baruch, and Haman was given back to Arur, and Mordechai became the Baruch. We got the ten greatest blessings, black. This is the day that comes down to the world, and it's given to Klal Yisrael for free. For free! That's why we pray Vatikin on Purim. That's why the Tefillot on Purim are higher than any other day of the year. Because what's able to be gotten is more than any other day of the year, even more than Yom Kippur. In a costume. Because that's the way it was given originally, and that's the way it's given every year, again and again, on the day of Purim. That's, according to many, the real makor of where the costume and the masks of Klal Yisrael come from. In order to remind everyone, you remember the costume of Yaakov Avinu? You remember what he got when he was dressed up as someone else? Today's the day that we can get those ten greatest blessings again. You could be zoiche on Purim to things that all year you'd never be able to be zoiche to. And that's why we go to our Rebbe's and we get Berachot on Purim. Because the Berachot on Purim are all mitkayem. Because it's the day of Baruch. It's the, it's the day that we went from Arur to Baruch. So all Berachot are on the day of Purim. My Rebbe, Rabbi Rabinovich, every year, Rameh Shalom tells me every year, you have to say the whole book of Tehillim on Purim. You'll be zoichet to all the berachot. It's not easy. It's a day that goes very fast. But he told me you can start from the night before, which is a big help. <laughs> but, he, but, it, but, but it's a day that you... It's, it's, it's like they put you on a shopping spree. They hand you a cart. The store is empty. And they tell you, you have... Five minutes to go through the store and take anything you can grab your hands on to. That's Hashem's Purim. It's the shopping spree of Kalal Yisrael. What are you going to do with it this year? Wow, this is, this, is, this is beyond words. Amazing. And therefore, Rabotai, V'yiten l'cha Elohim, mital ha-shamayim, mishmane ha-aretz rov dagan v'tirosh. This year Pesach will be different to you because you'll realize what's being decided that night. You'll give your children blessings that night. You'll raise up the, the Ka'ara and you'll sing Bibhilu like you never sang before that night. But you'll commemorate the receiving of the ten blessings back on the day of Purim. Just the way we uh, commemorate and celebrate Haman, who was hanged on the first day of Passover, but we celebrated on Purim. So too, the blessings that we got back on that Passover is celebrated on Purim because we're in the position of the costume to get it back from Shamaim. It comes into Klal Yisrael, into the world on Purim. For anyone to grab, you just got to want it. Pray your heart out this Purim. Sky's the limit. Berachot galore. Get as many berachot as you can. And let's be zoche that the berachot of the Purim this year will finally allow us to take off the mask, to get rid of the costumes, to get rid of the mask of history, which is galut, to get rid of the darkness, to get rid of corona, so that finally this Adar can be the greatest blessings to introduce the month of Nisan, the month of Geulah, which on that night of Pesach, we're hoping finally that Hashem will say, Oh, tonight, not only am I going to give you the blessings again, but Zekham Vezenofel, we're going to be so uprisen come to Klal Yisrael that will be Zochef finally to Geulah Shalema. Enjoy the Purim. Purim Sameach and use it.
because now you know what it's about. Thank you for listening.